Hey, what's happening everybody? I'm Brian from RC Creative and today I'm going to show you how I rehabbed an old antique leg vise that I got for 10 bucks into quite possibly the most awesome thing in my shop. Check it out. <laughs> Before I could do anything else, I had to disassemble the leg vise and decide which parts were worth saving and which were not. The oak jaw was really weather-worn and I decided to replace it with some fresh lumber that you'll see later in the video. All of the metal parts had surface rust, but nothing that couldn't be cleaned up. A little WD-40 loosened everything up into the vise's individual components. Next, I had to clean up all of the metal components. When I've got a large piece of rusted metal to clean, I use a process called electrolysis. In short, you submerge the metal in an electrolyte solution and apply electricity to the piece to be cleaned and a sacrificial piece of metal. Through the magic of science that I totally don't understand, the rust moves from the metal to be cleaned to the metal to be sacrificed. Yay science! I have a video describing the whole process, so check that out if you're curious. After I removed all the metal components from the electrolysis bath, I dried them and gave them a good polish with a wire wheel chucked onto my angle grinder. Yeah, I know, in the video, I'm not wearing gloves. What's not in the video is how freaking bad I regretted that decision later. Always wear hand and eye protection when you're using an angle grinder if you value your delicate skin and eyeballs. I might have been able to salvage the original oak jaw on the vise, but I used this as an opportunity to add a little bit of flair to my workbench. I decided to make a new jaw by laminating a piece of Douglas fir and a piece of babinga, but doing so meant I needed to design and mill the new piece. The new jaw needed holes bored for the hardware as well as a mortise to accept the horizontal guide. I'll include the actual dimensions in the notes that go along with this video, but for now, I don't think you need to worry about it. After coming up with a sketch of the new jaw, I ripped and cross-cut the scrap Douglas fir and scrap babinga, if at $8 a board foot there can possibly be such a thing. I surface planed both pieces off camera so I get a nice tight glue joint, and then I brought them both in, in the house because it's still too cold out for the glue to set properly. After that I spread out a good helping of tight bond 3 across the surfaces and then applied pressure with a couple of quick clamps. In my design, the jaw is the same width as the workbench's leg at the bottom, and it flares out to about twice the width towards the top. The easiest way I found to make that cut was to draw it out with a pencil and just follow the line with my circular saw. After cutting the jaw to the final shape, I used my jack plane to remove the saw marks and smooth out the sides, then added a round over to the edges the whole way around the jaw using a block plane. Because the workbench's leg becomes the back half of the vise, it needs some modifications. First, it needs a hole to accept the screw. The tricky part is that the hole needs to be larger at the back where the metal piece gets inserted to catch and lock the screw in place. The way I solved this problem was to trace a line around the leg that represents the center of the hole. At the back of the leg, I begin by drilling with a 2-inch Forstner bit to the depth of the hardware I need to install. Then I finish at the back using a 1 inch Forstner bit, about half the leg's thickness. Then I start from the front of the leg and drill until the holes meet. The amount of error in my angle, and I prevent any blowout from my bit exiting the surface of the wood. Next, I needed to chop a mortise at the bottom of the leg to accept the horizontal guide. This was by far the most difficult part of the whole process and could have been made a lot simpler by just dismantling the bench and working from an easier angle. I started by drilling out a rough opening for the mortise by making several holes with a 3 quarter inch Forstner bit. Then I squared up the hole with chisels, rasps, and a metric crap ton of test fits and patience. It's finally time to install the hardware that connects the leg to the jaw of the clamp. I start by pounding the metal piece into the back of the leg that secures the screw. Unfortunately, at this point, I lost a couple of video clips, including the one where I chop the mortise into the jaw that accepts the horizontal guide, as well as the clip where I drill out the hole in the jaw for the screw. Don't worry, you didn't miss anything interesting or complicated, it's literally just drilling some holes and then screwing in some screws. After the screw and horizontal guide are installed into the jaw, it's time to install the assembly into the workbench's leg. 
slip the screw into the hole in the top of the leg and the horizontal guide into the mortise at the bottom. If the holes were cut straight and square, everything should slide together and the screw should, well, it should screw. Now that I had a functioning leg vise, I removed it from the bench and sanded it to 220 grit with my random orbit sander. After cleaning up the dust, I applied a few coats of teak oil, which is the same finish that I use for the rest of the bench. Well, I've had this thing for a couple of weeks now, and I can honestly say it is my favorite tool in my shop. It's like having a second set of hands, basically. Um, any woodworking operation where you need a piece of wood held steady either vertically or horizontally or whatever, um, it's just the perfect tool for the job. Um, you know, hand planing, I use it for that, I use it for sawing, I, I use it for all kinds of stuff. And now over the last couple of weeks I've modified the, uh, the fit of the thing just a little bit. The, uh, the horizontal guide would tend to bind up a little bit. so. I took that out, I planed it down just a little bit, made it a little bit thinner, uh, gave it a coat of wax, and it couldn't be better now. I also made a new handle for it. It's not pretty, but it is functional. Um, I just took a piece of Douglas fir and rounded it on the um, on my lathe, and well, that's pretty much it, not much to it. If you want your own leg vise, which I, I really, if you've got a workbench or you're thinking about building a workbench, I really recommend it. It is the thing that makes this this bench just absolutely useful and integral to everything that I do now. Um, you can buy kits online. Now, Benchcrafted makes a really nice leg vise kit. It's also a couple hundred bucks, but you can find this hardware online and it won't break the bank. If you're planning on making your own leg vise, I would strongly encourage you to get a copy of Chris Schwarz's book, Workbenches. Um, not only did I get the plans for this workbench and all of the information that I needed to build it out of this book, um, it's also got plans for leg vise, twin screw vise, all of the uh, various vices that you can put on your workbench. Um, it's a really good book, really kind of changed the way I did word working after I bought it. Um, yeah, check it out. And if you enjoyed this video, I've got lots more. I do DIY videos, I do woodworking videos, I do, you know, upcycling videos like this business. And uh, I really hope you'll uh, click subscribe and check out what I've got to offer. All right, I'm Brian from RC Creative and I will catch you later.